Hello and welcome to today's Moto News Worldwide video here on the Motocross Network. Today we've got a variety of news stories and topics to go through. We're going to start off with my favorite story, and that is the announcement that an MXGP racer will be coming to the United States to race some AMA Pro Motocross. After that, we're going to look at some rumors from Loretta Lynn's uh, that's regarding some big name riders uh, and that they will be switching brands, uh, gear brands in 2025, sorry. Uh, and then we'll get back into some formal news stories. Factory MXGP Kawasaki rider Roman Fevra, who was rumored to be switching to Triumph, just signed a two-year extension with Kawasaki. Then we'll look at one of the first motocross of nations team announcements. After that, we have news that six Australian pro motocross riders will be attending the upcoming MXGP of China. And finally, to cap off this video, we finally got Kai DeWolf himself to speak on the rumors of him coming to the U.S. Now, before we get into the news, issue number 10 of the Motocross Network magazine is up for pre-order. The cover isn't visible yet on the website, but I can tell you that it will be Chase Sexton on the cover and the story about him will be regarding his recent dominance without Jet at the races, possible mind games, that's what the topic at hand will be for the magazine. We will also have an article on the incredible three-way battle for the title in MXGP written by our Australian writer, David Hogan. So if you want a copy, head to the MXNetwork.com. Pre-order issue number 10. If you want some back issues, we have leftovers of issue number 8 for this year. And we have some leftovers from 2023. Those are actually on sale. We have Jet Lawrence. Max Anstey, those are on sale, so if you want cheaper copies, those are on there as well. Anyway, head to the MXNetwork.com now to get one. If you want to save some money, you can buy the Mag Pass, which will get you the final three editions at a discounted rate. All right, let's get into the video. Former full-time German MXGP racer Henry Jacoby confirmed yesterday that he will be making the journey across the pond to the United States for... Uh, two rounds of AMA Pro Motocross. Those rounds are the upcoming Unadilla National and the Buds Creek National. Jacoby currently races for Sarholes, I think that's how you say it, Sarholes KTM Racing, and actually currently races the ADAC Championship full-time. Uh, he has raced a couple other one-off events as well this year. In June, he raced his home GP, the MXGP of German, uh, Germany at Tuchenthal. He qualified incredibly uh, with a ninth place finish, and on race day he finished 10th in Moto 1. Unfortunately, in Moto 2 he crashed out, thus finishing 31st, dropping his overall finish to 16th. Still, not a bad day for a one-off world championship appearance for the former full-time MXGP rider. Other than that, Jacoby attended one more one-off event this year, and that was the popular Zwart Cross. Uh, it is a Dutch motocross music, comedy, and stunt like super festival. It sounds pretty dope, to be honest. If you look it up, it looks pretty awesome. Motocross and festival all in one big thing. Anyway, Jacoby finished second overall with 2-1 results. He tied a tiebreaker. He lost. Um, on to the AMA Pro Motocross appearance news. Jacoby's team, Starholz KTM, announced this in a press release saying, quote, the German Henry Jacoby will travel to America next Monday to participate in two rounds of the AMA Pro Motocross Championship. Jacoby will compete in Unadilla and Bud's Creek. Jacoby will first compete in the ADAC Masters in Galdorf, I think that's how you say it, Galdorf, this weekend before traveling to America. Henry Jacoby spoke about the news with GateDrop.com, saying, quote, For me, it is a dream come true. We got or we go to the USA to have fun and also to make good results. I will go there with my KTM Sarholz bike, so this suits me. I am looking forward to the races. I am thankful for all the support of my partners, and I truly feel the passion of all German fans. I'm pumped to see it. I always love to see MXGP or Euro guys coming here to the U.S. to compete. It always adds depth to the racing and makes it more interesting. So good luck to Henry. I can't wait to see you and hopefully meet you. I will try to be interviewing you at Dilla. It is the uh, the Motocross Network's home race, Unadilla is. So I'm pumped to see it. Can't wait to meet you, man. Good luck. All right, before we move on, this video is sponsored by Blood Lubricants. Blood is a premium oil and lubricant company. They have everything from chain lube to degreaser, poly, it's called Bloodline Polyclean. They have regular oil, which is called Barracuda Blood, and they have the Clutch RX, which is their newest product. This helps preserve your clutch and extend its lifespan. 
So it's all high quality stuff, but don't take my word for it. It's uh, Chris Kiefer tested and approved as well. For a limited time, you could save 25% off site wide using our code TMN25. So go give them some love. Head to bloodlubricants.com today. Links in the description. All right. So this next story is a bit unorthodox for us to do on the uh, Moto News videos, but I feel it's something you guys should know or would want to know. Um, now, this is a fair warning before I get into it. These are unconfirmed rumors. It's rumors. Uh, the riders I'll be mentioning, I am only mentioning because I got this information from multiple sources. It gives it more merit. Uh, I have a few media friends who are at Loretta's. I'm not, but I was speaking with them over the phone. They told me this, and uh, Paul Pemex host Steve Mathis said the same thing. So to me, if it's coming from multiple sources, it's pretty trustworthy info. Um, there are three very prominent riders who have gear deals ending in 2024. Those riders are Justin Cooper, Cooper Webb, and Aaron Plessinger. Rumor has it that Justin Cooper will be separating with Alpine Stars in 2025 and signing with O'Neill. Cooper Webb will be separating with Thor and signing with FXR. And uh, the final rumor is pretty iffy. Uh, this one is not reliable in my opinion. The other two are pretty reliable. Those are set in stone in my opinion from what I heard. Now, the Aaron Plessinger rumor is less certain. Uh, the rumor was that a single-digit rider would be signing with Fly Racing. Well, other than Webb, the only other single-digit rider with a gear deal up for 2025 is Plessinger. So the rumor was that AP would be going with Fly Racing in 2025. Again, this one's iffy. Uh, I was also It was also expressed to me that the single-digit rider uh, going to Fly, that rumor was actually thought to be Webb, but that rumor got shut down since it's certain that he's with FXR now. So don't take my word for it. On the AP one, maybe AP has nothing to do with it. It could have just been that they thought Cooper Webb was going to be signing with Fly and come to find out it was FXR. So that one's not reliable, but it's pretty certain that Justin Cooper will be with O'Neill and Cooper Webb will be in FXR next year. That's it for the rumors. Let's get back into the facts and the news. Before we do that, this video is sponsored by Sweet Life CBD. Now we're all moto people here, and what comes with our sport is never-ending aches and pains. CBD can be a great natural solution for this, introducing Sweet Life. Sweet Life is an all-American uh, hemp company. They grow all their products or grow and make all their products here in the United States. Their products are THC free, so you won't get popped on a drug test. All their products are third party tested for purity as well, so you know it's all high quality stuff. Uh, they actually used to sponsor the Rocky Mountain KTM team and Blake Baggett before that team closed its doors. So they have a history in our sport. If you want to get rid of those aches and pains in a natural way, head to GetSweetLife.com and use our code TMN20 for 20% off site wide. All right, on to the next story, Roman Fevre and the Kawasaki Racing Team for MXGP, who have enjoyed a highly successful partnership in the FIM MXGP World Championship since 2020, have agreed to continue their collaboration for two more years. Since joining Kawasaki five years ago, Fevre has become the most successful rider in the team's history in MXGP, earning silver medals in the series in both 2021 and 2023. Last year was particularly successful for the Frenchman, who will turn 33 in December. He won six GPs and reached the podium at 13 rounds of the series. He started out 2024 with the same energy, collecting six podiums from the first seven rounds. A thumb injury, unfortunately, pushed him back. It forced him to miss several rounds and give up the battle for the world title. Already back on the podium last weekend at Lommel in Belgium, in just two races back, since injury, uh, Fever has once again shown how competitive he remains on the KX450, that he has helped develop the team with KRT and the Kawasaki engineers. Thanks to this successful collaboration, he will enter the 2025 and 2026 MXGP World Championship season with high goals and uh, his legendary fighting spirit on the Kawasaki. Roman Fever said in the Kawasaki press release, quote, I'm delighted to continue for two more years with Kawasaki. We know each other really well, and I'm confident that we will again fight for the title as we did this year until the injury, which forced me to miss several rounds. Injuries can sometimes impact your motivation, but I showed in both 2022 and this year that I can fight for wins and podiums when I come back. For sure, I might not have continued my career if I was not racing at the front of the pack, but my motivation is still there as I started racing motocross later than most of my rivals. We have signed a new two-year agreement for me that was important as I want to be fully focused on racing next season. Everyone knows how comfortable I am on the KX450SR and how I share the same goals with the team, so let's go for two more campaigns. 
This is great news for the Frenchman. It was rumored that he'd be switching to Triumph after this year, but that uh, plan got pushed back as Triumph delayed their 450 pr uh, production and development by a couple years. So who knows when they're going to begin that. I believe Triumph is delayed in general with everything. Uh, they're kind of falling behind schedule. So who knows? Maybe in a couple of years, Fever will make the switch. Maybe he'll just stay with Cowie. Uh, like he mentioned, he is older, uh, but he did enter the sport at an older age. So I don't think he's yet for, or ready for retirement just yet. Either way, I'm glad to see him sticking around for the near future and good luck on the Cowie. He's done good so far. Hopefully he keeps that momentum. All right, next story of the day. One of the first Motocross of Nations teams has been announced and that is Team New Zealand. Motorcycling New Zealand has announced its team for the 2024 FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations, which is set to put, uh, take place in England October 4th through 6th at Matterley Basin. The squad consists of Brody Connolly, Hamish Harwood, and Nathan Crawford, with James Scott named as the reserve rider. This will be led by team manager Shane King, a former world motocross champion. The team aims to build on New Zealand's impressive record at the event, which includes three podium finishes. The team manager Shane King said in the announcement, quote, after last year's massive effort from the team in France, both Bevan and I are proud once again to be heading to the biggest race in the world of motocross to represent our country, and with a great pool of riders to choose from that applied, we have a strong lineup. Both Bevan and I would like to thank the Taupu Motorcycle Club and all the riders that attended the Battle of the Clubs event, as this is a key fundraising event for the New Zealand team, along with all the sponsors, Penny Holmes, Best Build Construction, Nutrition System C4, Dub Construction, and Priority Demolition. Plus, a huge thanks goes to Motorcycling New Zealand. The riders commented on this as well, Brody Connolly saying, quote, looking forward to representing my country at the Motocross of Nations in a couple of months. Proud to be a Kiwi. Uh, Nathan Crawford said, quote, what an absolute honor it is to be chosen to represent Team New Zealand this year in Motocross of Nations. This is by far the coolest opportunity I've been given in my racing career to date, and I can't wait to head over and race against the best guys in the world. Uh, Hamish Harwood, who's leading the team, has yet to comment on the announcement, but there you have it, one of the first Motocross of Nation team announcements. Good luck to Team New Zealand. On to the next story of the day. There are quite a few Australian racers heading to the upcoming MXGP of China. Uh, speaking of Crawford and Connolly, six, they are one of six riders who have accepted the challenge to compete in the Shanghai-based event. Nathan Crawford, Todd Waters, Kirk Gibbs, Brody Connolly, Jace Cosford, and Brian Dennis will be attending said race as the championship returns to the world's second most populous nation for the first time since 2019 and just a year before MXGP returns to Australia. The riders will participate in the classes that align with their pro MX campaigns, which means that MXGP riders like uh, Crawford, Gibbs, Waters, uh, who currently fill positions third, fourth, and fifth, will be in the MXGP category, and the remainder of the riders will be in the MX2. The MXGP of China will be round 19 out of 20 in a huge 2024 calendar uh, with the season ending in Spain at Kozar, I believe is how you pronounce it, on September 29th. Uh, and then in 2025, MXGP will be returning down under for the first time in 24 years. The MXGP of Australia in Darwin will be held in September 2025 and promoted by the Northern Territory Major Events Company featuring the MXGP and MX2 classes, as well as the Women's Motocross World Championship as a support class. The 2025 MXGP calendar will be announced later this year. Of the six Aussies heading to China, former Motocross of Nations representative Waters and Gibbs are the only ones with previous MXGP experience. Waters was ninth in the 2015 championship, and after winning the Pro MX Australian title in 2015, Gibbs then joined Waters at the season-ending MXGP round in the United States. I love to see it. MXGP has a chronic problem, and that is having small gates, small lineups. So whenever we see guys make the trek to race an MXGP World Championship race, gets me excited. I love to see more depth being added to the field. So good luck to all the Aussies heading to China in the upcoming MXGP of China in Shanghai. All right, final story of the day. It's a short one, but it adds context to a rumor that's been swirling around the internet in the pits for a while now. So the Dutch Nistan Husqvarna factory MX2 rider and current MX2 world championship leader, Kai DeWolf, has been rumored to be in talks of moving to the United States for a while now, switching teams and all that. Originally, it was thought that he'd be coming here in 2025, but then he got locked in with the KTM group umbrella 
for another year in the World Championship. So the thought was, hey, potentially 2026. The real question is, what does Kai think about all this? He really hasn't spoken on this. Uh, does he really want to move to the U.S., or is it going to be just to uh, avoid being forced up to the MXGP class, such as Vial did? So if he wins the MX2 title this year, he'll have next year to defend it, and then that's it. That's the end of his MX2 career. It's either move up to MXGP or take the Tom Vial route and win your titles and move on to America. Uh, fortunately, we finally got some info on this. Kai spoke with GateDrop.com after this past weekend's MXGP of Flanders at Lommel, and we got his thoughts on all this. Uh, here's the banter back and forth between Jonathan McCready, uh, journalist with GateDrop, and Kai DeWolf. McCready asked, quote, you rode a 450 last winter at a sand race, and you looked really good on it, uh, but you also mentioned you want to go to America. Do you know what direction your career is going to go in at the moment? Kai responded, quote, no, I really don't know at the moment. For sure, I am staying for another year here in Europe, maybe even longer, but I don't know what I will be doing. It can go both ways. It is up to me and what I want to do. I enjoy riding the 450. I ride it during the week sometimes, but to race that thing is different. We will see what we end up doing, but I really enjoy the 250 for the moment, and hopefully we can keep that going for a few years. By the sounds of that, he's leaning towards coming to the U.S. after winning his titles. Um, McCready went on to ask, saying, Quote, a lot of young riders really want to go to America. Obviously, it is really glamorous. I was at A1, and you can see why people want to go there with Prado doing well and Vial doing well. Is that giving you the confidence you could succeed and makes you want to go there? Uh, Kaido Wolf responded saying, quote, I don't know. I just want to experience riding Supercross. I did a few Supercross races when I was young on the 85, some Dutch Supercross races. I just want to experience it on a 250, on a four-stroke, let's say. Maybe we can do it anytime soon. And then we will see what we'll end up doing. So, yeah, he's pretty unsure. But I really do see Kai following in the footsteps of Tom Vial. If Kai wins the 2024 world title, which I expect him to do, uh, I'd expect that he will defend it next year and then make his move to America in 2026. Um, I wish he'd stay in MXGP as I really enjoy that series. And uh, I think it's where he belongs. He's killing it there. Uh, I also hate the fact that all the up and coming world championship talent want to come here. I wish they would stay there and keep the future bright for MXGP, but in the end, it's their decision. I like them no matter where they race, but I would prefer those guys to stay in MXGP. Um, but yeah, either way, Kyda of Wolf's an incredible racer. He's got a bright future whether he stays there or comes to America. So yeah, good luck to him, and can't wait to see what your future's got, man. All right, that's all I have for today's Moto News Worldwide video. Let me know your guys' thoughts on all these stories. How do you feel about Henry Jacoby coming to the United States? How about those gear rumors, the switching uh, gear for Webb and Cooper? Uh, will you miss seeing Webb and Thor? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to go support our sponsors, Blood Lubricants and Sweet Life CBD. Uh, that's in the description of the video. And finally, don't forget to head to our website, themxnetwork.com, and pre-order issue number 10 of our magazine or become a MagPass subscriber to get their remaining issues for the year. Like I said, we got leftovers from last year on sale or back issue from this year on there as well. Limited copies of those left. So if you want one, go snag one. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the Motocross Network, and I'll see you guys in the next video.